Screen Directors Playhouse, stars Margaret Truman, James Stewart, production Jackpot, director Walter Lang. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, by Chesterfield, the only cigarette that gives you mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste, the cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope, and by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. Tonight, on the anniversary of our 100th broadcast, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present that hilarious motion picture comedy hit, Jackpot. And here are our stars, Miss Margaret Truman and Mr. James Stewart. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Tonight's story, Jackpot is a comedy that deals with the trials and tribulations of the Lawrence family. It's a satire on the many giveaway programs offering thousands of dollars, fabulous amounts to the average American family. Winning one is an adventure that is rather unforgettable, as we will soon see. But before we begin, here's Jimmy Wallington. And here's a word from RCA Victor. Last week, the curtain went up on the 75th anniversary of the National Baseball League and the 50th anniversary of the American League. There's no better way to celebrate than by enjoying at first hand the thrills and the clean sportsmanship of baseball today. Baseball today. It's the American way. Of course, the next best thing to a seat in the stands is a seat in front of a 19-inch RCA Victor television. RCA Victor's new extra-powerful picture pickup gives you the best possible reception everywhere. You know RCA Victor Television is most in demand, but here's really important news. RCA Victor 19-inch television is available. It's on display now at dealer stores. So insist on the best. Insist on seeing 19-inch million-proof television by RCA Victor. When you do, you'll agree, inch for inch, your best buy in television is RCA Victor 19-inch. Now the first act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Jackpot Starring Margaret Truman as Amy And James Stewart in his original role of Bill Yes, ain't we got fun? We're the Lawrences of Glenville, Indiana. I'm Amy, the voice on the left. And on the right, that good-looking manly tenor is my husband, Bill. And between us, to complete our family quartet, is my teenage daughter, Phyllis, and my young son, Tommy. On this happy note, we all went to bed last night. And on this happy note, we all arose this morning. Bill, Bill, wake up! Hmm? No, no, Come on, no, no, up, I'm, up, up. Oh, gee whiz. I, I wish you'd waited just two more minutes. Why? Well, I, I was just about to make a choice. A choice about what? I was having a dream. About me? Well, you you were kind of a part of it. It, uh, it was before we were married, and I had to make up my mind. I could go to the North Pole with Admiral Byrd, or I could marry you. <laughs> 
And what did you decide? Well, I didn't. You woke me up. Oh. <laughs> you mean you had some doubts? Oh, I don't know. I just, I, just a dream. You know. well, I better start getting dressed. Mm -hmm. Amy, how, how long have we been married? We're having an anniversary in two weeks, and you were there for the wedding. Figure it out for yourself. Amy, are you happy? <laughs> At 7.30 in the morning? What kind of a question is that? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. I was just thinking about us. You know, this is it, Amy. The pattern's all set. You and me and the kids. This is it. I'm never going to the North Pole with Admiral Byrd. <laughs> Bird went to the South Pole. Well, this time he was going to the North Pole. He had oh. some kind of a defroster or something. <laughs> anyway, what difference does it make? I'm never going to get there anyway. I'll just go on working at Woodruff's department store. You'll go on raising the kids. One day we'll be old and nothing will have happened. Is that what made you think about us? No, no. No, dear. I, I love you. I, I love the kids. But I... I, I want, want to go, go to, to the, the North, North Pole. Pole. Yes. <laughs> Why not? Well, because for one thing, dressed as you are, you'd freeze to death. Oh, oh say, Bill, uh, remind me to remind you not to forget to bring home a case of club soda tonight. You know, tonight. Tonight, yeah, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. The gang's coming over to play Monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> Every Wednesday, week in, week out, we play Monopoly. Yeah, I know. Amy, Amy, listen to me. Let's. Let's be daring. Let's, next week, let's play on Thursday. No, 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 no. It's a bit too much of a shock for everybody. Yeah. Including you. Now, how about shocking yourself into remembering to come home on time, huh? Dinner is served promptly at 6.30, sir. <laughs> Amy, darling. Why, Bill, you're home early. What's the occasion? Well, I couldn't wait to tell you the good news. <gasps> oh, you've been promoted. A vice presidency. Now, I hold knew on, you'd make hold it. I knew on, Amy. Make... No, it hasn't happened yet. Maybe in the next three weeks. I don't understand. Well, Mr. Woodruff said whoever comes in with the best idea how to increase our business volume, that's the one who'll get the job. Here, I'll get it. Hello. Hello. New York is calling Mr. William J. Lawrence. Well, uh, New York. Uh, uh, well, this is William J. Lawrence. This is the federal broadcasting system, Mr. Lawrence. Will you be at home tonight between 9 and 10 o'clock to listen to Name the Mystery Husband on the federal broadcasting system? Well, I... Your I... telephone number has been selected as one of those to be called during the program tonight. You'll have a chance of a $24,000 jackpot. Well, I... Good! <laughs> now, please don't use your phone between 9 and 10 so the line will be open for us when we call. Well, I... Thank you. <laughs> well, I, I'll be darned Who was that on the phone? That was the federal broadcasting system And they want me to be home between 9 and 10 So that I can name the mystery husband And win the $24,000 jackpot Oh, it's been pretty good, aren't you? Get the ice out for me, will you, dear? Who was it? Who? Well, uh Oh, it, it was Mabel Spooner Pretending she's a radio station I... Of course, I went along with the gag. I, I told her I'd be home. Are you sure it was Mabel Spooner? Mabel Spooner, yeah, yeah, oh, sure. Well, what did you say the name of the program was? Name the Mystery Husband. You win the trillion-dollar jackpot. No, it was a $24,000 jackpot. What, Tommy? Oh, I don't know what you win, Mom, but it's something fierce. Can I stay up and listen to it? Bill, are you sure it wasn't the federal broadcasting system that called you? I don't know. Gee, did they call us? Well, somebody called us, son. Wait, do you know the answer? No, no, I don't. Oh, gee, Dad, why are you doing that? Now, Tommy, Tommy, don't, don't get excited. Oh, but Mom, no, no, it, it's just some of our friends trying to play a joke oh, on your face. That's gosh, right, Tommy. Mom. No, no, that's just a gag. Oh, now Mom, go on and wash Mom. your face before we eat. Gee, Wiz, what kind of a thing is that to joke about? You sure? I'm positive. Are you? I don't know. Why, Amy, why would the broadcasting company call me? Well, they just take a number out of the book. Oh, no, the odds are one in ten million. Why did they call me just as soon as I got home? Why didn't they call me this afternoon? No, 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 it's, it's Mabel Spoon. I, uh, she knew I was at the store. Well, as soon as I hear her voice, I'll know. Mabel? Hmm? 
Adolph, now come over here. Mm. Now, now, I want you to repeat after me. Mm. This is the federal broadcasting system. This is the federal broadcasting system. That's no, not her, Amy. <laughs> Excuse me, everybody. Yeah, just a minute. Uh, Bill, come into the kitchen. I want to talk to you privately. Sure, 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 darling. Bill, we have to do something about this. Do something about what? Try to find out who the mystery husband is. Oh, now, Amy, if we win, we win. If we lose, what's the difference? Everybody's having a lot of fun. Fun? Bill Lawrence, I don't get you at all. You work a full year at Woodruff for $7,500, and here you have a chance to win $24,000, and you don't even lift your finger to do anything about it. Well, what, what do you want me to do, honey? Well, well, Walter Winchell's always giving tips on the jackpot programs. M maybe, maybe somebody knows who the mystery husband is. Who? Well, maybe somebody in radio, maybe. I don't know anybody in radio. Well, don't we know somebody who might know somebody? Well, look, it's too late anyway, Amy. Look, it's a quarter after eight right oh, now. The program gosh. goes on in 45 minutes. Oh, uh, wait, wait. I've got it. Hank Summers. What about him? Newspaper man. Oh, he won't be back from New York till tomorrow. Call him. New York? Oh, that's long distance. Call him. Okay. Oh, operator. Uh, uh, New York, the Bijou Hotel, Mr. Hank Summers. Person to person. Amy, that's going to cost $10. That doesn't make sense. What? But it does make sense. $24,000 worth. Suppose Woodruff doesn't make you vice president. Who cares? Yeah, $24,000. Yeah. Hello? Hank? Hello, Hank. Hey, hey, this is Bill Lawrence. Hey, uh, who's the mystery husband? Me. <laughs> I haven't seen my wife in 12 years. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good one. And say, uh, 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 no, I, uh, name the mystery husband, husband. I'm a contestant now. Well, I don't know for sure, but they're saying it's Harry James or Artie Shaw. Harry James or Bernard Shaw? Artie Shaw. <laughs> Artie Shaw. Is he married? Silly boy. <laughs> the government hasn't frozen wives as yet. <laughs> now, look, pal, don't blame me if it isn't either one of them. Might be some third guy we never even heard of. Yeah, I know, Hank. Well, uh, thanks a lot, Hank. I'll see you when you get home. So long. What did he say? Who is it? Oh, boy, we're in, Amy. We can't lose. He told you who the mystery husband is? He sure did. We can't lose. That's definite. Well, who is it? Well, it's either Harry James or Artie Shaw. Or somebody else. Oh. <laughs> Now let's eavesdrop on a couple of old pals. Say, Bing, you got a minute? Oh, sure, Bob. I got all the time in the world. Don't tell me you own that, too. Oh, never mind that stuff. Get to work with it. Okay. Folks, better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. And you can prove that yourself. Just make our mildness test. Buy Chesterfields, then open them and enjoy that milder, mellow aroma. Now light one up, and you'll know Chesterfield's milder because it smokes milder. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. Yes, mildness and no unpleasant aftertaste are what you and I and every smoker wants. Hurry up, Dad. Here comes the music. Why, Chesterfield, Chesterfield, the one that proves its case. Yes, Chesterfields are milder, milder, plus no aftertaste. So ho, open a pack and give them a sniff. Then you'll smoke them. Now the second act of Jackpot. Starring Margaret Truman and James Stewart. Did you ever play bridge and experience the anticipation and excitement of awaiting the perfect hand, the 13th spade? Well, I guess that about sums up how my bill felt while he waited to be called by the Name the Mystery Husband program. His nerves were absolutely tingling and jumping. Ain't we got fun? And ladies and gentlemen, here are some more prizes to add to the list. 24 Corday Swiss watches, a lifetime supply of the push-button shaving cream with three extra buttons, 100 Great Dane dogs, and besides that, one can of dog food, an airplane trip to New York for two, your portrait painted by the famous Hilda Jones. Your house 
decorated by Leslie of Harrington Interiors, and for your daylight barbecues, the finest in outdoor flood lighting, the incomparable Magnolite. Operator, place the next call. It's either Harry James or Artie Shaw. What? What are you talking about, Bill? This is Woodruff, your boss. We wondered if you and Amy could come over for some bridge. Bridge? Are you crazy? Now hang up the phone. I can't talk to you now. What's the matter with you? Who was it? Uh, it's Mr. Woodruff, my boss. I guess I told him, didn't I? Oh. <laughs> Call Dorothy. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Hey, give, give me the telephone. Hey, what, 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 what do you think you're doing? Well, what did I do? I didn't do anything. Everybody hates me. <laughs> Only eight minutes left. Daddy! Shh, shh. Quiet, Tommy. Daddy, I'm stuck. What? My head's stuck between these two rails on the banister. Oh, <laughs> I can't get it sake. out. Oh, oh dear. wait a minute. Will you, for heaven's sake. All right, all right. Now, here... Now, take it easy now. We'll get it out. All right, now, pull. Try, try and get... Help me a little. Pull harder. Ow! My ears! Well, pull a little... Oh, there's... Hey, that's the phone. What'll I do? Just leave me stuck here. All right. Well, don't go away now. I... Hey, Dad, watch out the telephone book. No, no, I'm all right. I... Way to answer the phone. He's out. Help me. Help me get him up. Somebody answer the phone. Wake up, Bill. Wake up. Say something. Here, I'll throw some water in his face. <laughs> hey, what? Who hit me? He was bigger than I was, Amy. Answer me. Answer the phone. Answer the. Wait, who is it? I don't know. Find Please. out, Bill. Hello? Hello. This is Mr. William Lawrence? Yes, uh, this is Mr. William Lawrence. William J. Lawrence of Glenville, Indiana? Hello there, Mr. Lawrence. Oh, hello. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence, this is Larry Haynes of the Name the Mystery Husband program. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> ah, that's splendid. Now, Mr. Lawrence, we have a little riddle for you, and if you answer it correctly, you will win a chance to guess the identity of the mystery husband. And win the $24,000 jackpot. Are you ready, Mr. Lawrence? Oh, I guess so. All right. Slow and steady wins the race, not the one who sets the pace. One went fast, the other went slow, but the slow one won, as we all know. I don't know. Shh, race, race, wins the race. It's middle ground in your house. It's middle ground in your house. It's middle ground and... No! It's the tortoise in the hare! The tortoise in the hare. The tortoise in the hare. What's that? The tortoise in the hare? Oh, that is absolutely correct, Mr. Lawrence. <laughs> now, listen carefully, Mr. Lawrence. Here is the mystery husband himself. <gasps> Name him, and the $24,000 is yours. Are you ready? George Bernard Shaw. What's that? Uh, don't you think you'd better listen to the mystery husband first? In, in a haystack, little girl blue, farewell, I am off anew. You can't see me, but I'll see you. Pins in a haystack, little girl blue. <laughs> All right, Mr. Lawrence, can you tell us who the mystery husband is? Mr. Lawrence, are you there? Well, Mr. Lawrence appears to have fainted. Amy, give me a nickel. Heads, it's Harry James. Tails, it's Tommy Dorsey. Mr. Lawrence! <laughs> it's heads. I think it's Harry James. Will you repeat that, Mr. Lawrence? I think it's Harry James. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence out there in Glenville, Indiana, 
you have just won the $24,000 jackpot. <laughs> Look at all this loot that's arrived. This diamond ring. Here, let me put it on your finger, Amy. Oh, that's where it belongs. It's lovely. I've always meant to buy you one. Thanks, darling. Mr. and Mrs. Lawrence, I presume. Yes. Who are you? I, madam, am one of your prizes. <laughs> Which one? I, sir, am Leslie of Harrington Interior. I, sir, am Lawrence of Arabia. Bill! <laughs> no, Mr. Leslie's the decorator who's come to do our house. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, simply scrumptious. Well, won't you come in? My wife and I'll show you around. Thank you. <laughs> oh, divine. This room is absolutely divine. We won't be able to use a thing. <laughs> Ghastly. And there, I suppose, is the uh, dining room. Mm-hmm. My favorite room. Divine, absolutely divine. Mm. Simply just junk everything and start from scratch. Oh, well, I don't know about that. You know, there are some things around here I like. You like? How dare you? <laughs> All right. Before I commit mayhem, I think I'd better go to work. Goodbye, Mr. Leslie. <laughs> just Leslie. Uh, goodbye, old boy. Uh, goodbye, Amy. I'll see you tonight. Big meeting with Woodruff. Bye-bye, darling. Good luck. <laughs> Well, Bill, any suggestions on how to better our business? Yes, sir. I think that what we oh, have to do... Oh, just hold it just is to, We're going to form Yes. A... Oh, it's Mrs. Lawrence. She wants to speak to you, Bill. Well, tell her I'll call her back later. Oh, Don't... all right, dear. Uh, Bill says that he... Call... He says it's urgent. Go ahead and talk to her. No, no, but... Go I... on! But go ahead. Take less time than what's going on right now. Go on. Well, I... I... Why to take the... Yeah? Yes, Amy? It has? Well, you can... You... Well, why don't you... Why don't you just put it in the refrigerator? Oh, well... Well, I'll think of something and call you back. Yes, dear, yes. Yes, yes, I know it's a hot day. Yes, yes, Goodbye. You see, it's the jackpot, Mr. Woodruff. The more stuff's arrived. They just delivered the meat. Did Amy call you about that? Yes, that's right. Well, why didn't she just put it in the refrigerator? Well, it's a quarter of a ton of beef, you see. <laughs> <laughs> it's a complete steer, fully dressed. Yes, yeah, complete steer. All right, all right, all right. All right. Where were we? Well, now, here, I was going to tell you, my idea is we were just about to open a babysitting department. What? Who in the store. said so? Yes, and a babysitting oh, department a minute, in the store here. Yes. It's Amy, Bill. Oh, no, no, tell her. I can't talk to her. Oh, no, her. no, no. It's all right. I can wait. Some things are more important than other things. Gee whiz, right in the middle of a conference. Yes, Amy. Oh, the freezer. Well, that solves all our problems, doesn't it? Oh, it doesn't. Oh. No, of course you can't throw away 400 dozen kippered herrings. <laughs> yes. Yes, Amy. Yes, Amy. I know it's a hot day, dear. Yes. Well, you just stack them someplace in the shade, and I'll think of something. You. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll call you back. Now, where were we? You I... were about to become a vice president. Oh, thank you. Vice thank president you. in charge of diaper changing. I'll answer it. Never I'll mind. Answer. Never mind. Conference dismissed. And on your way out, send in Fred Burns, the new vice president. <laughs> What do you mean? It's me. I live here, Amy. Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. Well, the only polite people I've met so far are the truck drivers. Of course, they always are. Amy, what's what's that on your head? A Jacques Fifth Avenue hat. <laughs> the only thing I knew where to put. Look, isn't the piano beautiful? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a very nice tone. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, Bill, your newspaper man friend Hank called. I wanted to know what you're going to do about your income tax. What income tax? The income tax on all the stuff we won. 
Well, how can you pay income tax on a refrigerator? What, what are you supposed to do? Send them a tray of ice cubes? <laughs> Consult a tax expert. Oh, and by the way, Hilda Jones is on her way over here to talk to you about your portrait. Portrait? Oh, no, no portrait now, Amy. We settled that. Oh, Bill, please. It can only happen once in a lifetime. No, absolutely not. Now, no portrait. Yeah? I am Hilda Jones. You have won me, too. Wow! <laughs> Gee, you're a prize package. <laughs> Thank you. I am here to paint your portrait. Well, let's not lose any time, kid. Let's... <laughs> what did you say, Bill? Oh, 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 I forgot, <laughs> uh, Amy. Uh, 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 Miss Jones, this is my wife, Amy. How do you do? You're French, aren't you? Jones? <laughs> Hilda Garjone. In English, Hilda Jones. It's simpler, yes? Oh, much. <laughs> but Greenwich Village... I thought you'd look sort of uh, artsy-craftsy, and you're so... Uh, <laughs> well, anyway, it's a shame you had to travel such a distance, because that was the one thing Bill said he didn't want, didn't you, Bill? How was that, dear? Your, <laughs> your portrait painted, dear. Oh, uh, well, Of course, I, I... I wanted him to, but he's absolutely set against it. Oh, oh that is bad. If I do not paint the portrait, I will lose the commission. Oh, isn't that a shame? Yes, a shame. Well, now, I hate to do that to you, but I, I just feel so silly posing. Oh, but and... why, Mr. Lawrence? You would make a beautiful subject. You have such fine features and good bone structure. I have? <laughs> yes, and posing, it is nothing. You will enjoy it. At least all of my subjects do. Oh. <laughs> Gee, it's hard to talk around here. <laughs> really? Yeah, well, I mean, there's so much noise here. Really? Well, I am staying at the Glenville Hotel, Mr. Lawrence. Maybe it is better if I call you tomorrow? Yeah, well, why don't, why don't you do that? Yes, do. You can reach me at Woodruff's department store. I will be sure and call you. Au revoir. <laughs> Au revoir. Hmm. Did she go out the door or crawl back into the woodwork? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Quite a charmer, isn't she? Uh, I didn't notice particularly. <laughs> oh, didn't you? And what happens when you do notice particularly? Does smoke shoot out of your ears? <laughs> <laughs> Don't oh, Amy, me. And before you go off to do all that posing... I wish you'd do something about putting those 400 dozen kippered herrings in the refrigerator. And you might plan to spend a couple of hours in there with them. Oh, hello, Mrs. Lawrence. Or should I have said goodbye? Well, what's on your mind, Leslie? Uh, have you uh, found out about the tax yet? Well, is it true? Oh, yes, indeedy. You mean to tell me I have to pay income tax and all this stuff here? Oh, you poor, innocent lamb. Hey, I, to hear you talk, you'd think Uncle Sam himself was sitting at the radio writing down all sorts of... Oh, they take a list, yes. It's on file in Washington with your fingerprints. Well, well why don't they announce that on the program? If they did, Mr. Lawrence, there'd be no program. <laughs> Toodaloo! Here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the sudden pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. It's a way to ease the pain, often within a few minutes. A way that is incredibly fast and effective. It's anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people were first introduced to anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today these tablets are in such widespread use that all drug counters have them, and anyone may enjoy their benefit. 
Next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, by all means, try Anison. You'll like the convenience of Anison tablets. And you'll be delighted with Anison's incredibly fast action. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison. Ask for Anison by name today at your druggist. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's All-Star Festival. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. By Chesterfield, the only cigarette that gives you mildness, plus no unpleasant aftertaste, the best cigarette for you to smoke. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. The Screen Director's Playhouse production of Jackpot starring Margaret Truman and James Stewart, will continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. is the Screen Director's Playhouse. We continue with the third act of Jackpot, starring Margaret Truman as Amy and James Stewart as Bill. Two urgent items. Bill is being painted by Hilda Jones, who is quite a dish. The other... A tax consultant visited us regarding our loot from the jackpot. His verdict? We owe the government $7,000. We have four hundred dollars in the bank. Ain't we got fun? Yeah, ain't we? Hello? Amy, I'm still trying to sell enough jackpot prizes to pay those taxes. Any luck? Yeah, I sold two ivory penguins, 50 cents a piece. And, uh, I loaded a watch right under Woodruff's nose. What's that? You sold Mr. Woodruff's nose? Uh, no, uh, I would have accepted it's hard to pry loose. Now, I'm not coming home for dinner tonight, dear. I just got a tip on a fellow that might buy the 7,500 cans of oxtail soup. Oh, but, Bill, I've smothered such a beautiful herring. Well, honey, he's just going to be in town tonight, and you know how we've got to hurry I know, him. I know, the tax. Oh, well... I'm not very hungry, so I'll wait up for you, and we'll both eat later. I, uh, darling, I, I won't be home later. Is it the herring? No, I have to see Hilda. That's worse, stuffed herring. <laughs> what? How's that? No, nothing, nothing, Bill. Just the next time you make these plans, I wish you'd give me a little advance warning so I won't be left high and dry. Goodbye. Oh, uh, Mrs. Lawrence, uh, would you know where I could locate Hilda Jones, the uh, artist girl? I could tell you where I wish I could locate her. Well, uh, never mind. Leslie, we're going out. Out? You and I, we're dressing for dinner. Just you and I, not <laughs> Mr. Lawrence? Mr. Lawrence has gone to the North Pole. I beg your pardon? And since he has, I'm going to swim the channel. <laughs> Well, you've got the eyes right, but it seems to me uh, Amy's hair is a little... It's a little, uh... Yeah. Yeah, Hilda. Right, right in here. It should be a little darker, I think. Uh, like so? Hmm? Uh, when must this be finished? Well, Wednesday's our anniversary. You know, Amy still thinks you're painting my portrait. Uh -huh. You, you couldn't come over for dinner, could you? I sure would like you to be there when I give this to Amy. Uh, well, uh, th that is very nice, but when I get this finished, I think it is... Better I go home. Do you not think so? Mm, well, I, I, I don't... Oh, oh, What's the matter? Oh, 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 it's nothing. Only when I work too long, my neck, it gets... Uh, 
Oh, maybe a drink would help. Oh, sure, sure, sure. What, what orange aid? <laughs> Whiskey and soda, I think. Uh, come downstairs to the bar. All right. Oh, uh, no. Uh, no, I don't think we better. Yeah. You see, I found out today that there's a lot of gossip around about you and me. No. Yeah. Uh, well, you know how it is. The people around here is sort of small town. And you are now? Well, I get a little, I get around more, you know. I go up to Chicago on buying trips, stuff like oh. that. And it sort of gives me a broader point of view. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes. Yes, of course. Oh, 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 my neck. Well, uh, here, oh. here. Now, you just ought to relax those muscles. Here, oh. now, why don't you sit over in the chair here? Now, I'll oh. rub the neck and shoulders here. I, I use my champ at this. Now, just, uh, just, just relax. Ah. Oh, feels good. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I could make better contact with the rubbing if I could uh, remove this towel around your shoulders here. All right. And I, too, will remove this smock. Yes, that's fine. Oh. Oh. Oh, well. Uh, well, you... You look very nice in that strapless sunsuit, oh. right? <laughs> Say, I have an idea. You stand over here in, in front of me. I, I'm going to crack your back, so just relax now. Oh! 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 Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I broke the zipper. Did I? I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, it is uh, better. I, I put on something a little more. Yes, a little more. A little. Good night. Good night. Oh, am I glad to be home? Didn't you enjoy your dinner, Leslie? Uh, I don't think the duck is nesting very well. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. The menu said Long Island duck. If that duck came from Long Island, it walked out here. <laughs> uh, fix me a bicarbonate, will you, in a hurry, please? I'm, I'm going out outside to my trailer. I'll... Oh. There's uh, someone at the door. It's Bill. Egad. What's the matter? Well, he has a guilty conscience. He's carrying his shoes in his hands and tiptoeing in. Oh, the rascal. <laughs> oh, Leslie, this has been the most enchanting evening of my life. Oh, the... oh, oh it has, huh? Hey, uh, <laughs> Leslie, come over here. You huh? keep your hands in your pocket. Remember, I'm a gentleman. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> hey, Amy, would you mind telling me what this is all about? Of course. Leslie and I found ourselves with an evening on our hands, so we decided to do a little celebrating. We went to the Tavern Inn for dinner. We had the most divine duck. <laughs> hey, where are you going? Uh, please, Mrs. Lawrence, the bicarbonate, please. I'll tell you what I'll do, Bill. I'll fix two doses. I'll take mine out to Leslie's trailer, and you can take yours back to Hilda at the Glenville Hotel. Oh. Oh, so that's why you... you that's you, why I, I. Well, that's the joke of the year. Well, why don't you let me in on it? All right, I will. We'll go right down to the hotel right now. Where are my shoes? Are you sure you brought them home with you, dear? I, look, <laughs> now, I want you to know that Hilda Jones is a nice, sweet, innocent girl. She's <laughs> the best friend a man ever had. Now, come mm. on, let's go. It's me, Bill Lawrence. Bill, you came back here to rub my back some more. (laughs) Oh, Mrs. Lawrence. Yes. And how? I'll say she's the best friend a man ever had. Bill Lawrence, don't ever talk to me again as long as you live. sleep last night? I slept in the garage. You stop asking personal questions, Tommy. Who's that playing the piano? Oh, a prospective customer. He's trying at first. Why don't you sit down and have breakfast? Not unless someone invites me. Tommy, tell your father someone is not inviting him. Have a roll, Daddy. Thank you, Phyllis. At least someone loves their daddy. Phyllis, would you tell your father there was a policeman here this morning? Those 50 fruit trees have to be off the sidewalk by 5 o'clock. Thank you. Phyllis, would you mind telling your mother that she'll have to get somebody else to take those fruit trees away because I'm going to Chicago on a buying trip today. Also, I have a chance to unload the diamond ring and the watches there to a Mr. Flick Morgan who's 
in the horse room business or something. Hey, Fats Waller! Hey, go outside and find the lost cord, huh? Are you two getting a divorce? What? Well, we have a right to know, Tommy and me. Yes, yes, you have indeed, Phyllis. You'll be among the first to be notified. Oh. <laughs> Don't joke, Father. Children are the real victims of broken homes. I read an article in the Ladies' Home Journal that said that children are the real victims of broken homes. Children are. That article sort of repeats itself, doesn't it? <laughs> And it also said that when the parents are always quarreling, this has a serious effect on the children, and later in life it can change their personality. Is that a fact? Yeah. Well, you know, Phyllis, sometimes I think a change in personality might do you good. <laughs> and now, would you mind uh, to ask your mother if she'd be kind enough to drive me down to the station? I have to catch the 915. Tell your father the answer is no. Good. Tell your mother I'll drive down to the train myself, leave the keys with the station master. Goodbye, children. <laughs> Right. Hey, huh? say, uh, fella, uh, this is a horse parlor or something, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. What's on your mind, Bob? Are you Flick Morgan? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Say, uh, my name's Lawrence, and Harry Summers told me to look you up. He oh. said he thought you might be interested in this diamond ring. Uh, well, it's a nice-looking stone. Is it hot? Is it what? I said, is it hot? Is it Hot. Hot. Hot? I, uh, oh, oh, hot. Oh, no, no, I, I want it in a jackpot program on the radio. Jackpot program? <laughs> that's right. Uh, well, that's a new one, anyway. How much you want for it? Oh, uh, five, uh, <clears throat> five thousand dollars. The coppers. What? Hold on, the coppers. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, hey, where are you going? Hey, hey you've got my ring. All right, boys, all right, line them up. Hey, you, where do you think you're going? I was just going out this window. Come on, come on, get over here. Okay, everybody, hands on your heads and line up against the wall and no noise. You're all under arrest. Uh, now, officer, I wasn't making any bets here. No, what were you doing? I was just trying to sell a diamond ring. Where is it? Well, he had it on his finger. Keep your hands on your head, diamond ring, huh? What's that stuff in your pockets? Now, these, these watches, well, yeah. now, they all belong to me. I won them on a Holy on a Toledo, radio. the guys are walking jewelry store. I won all these things. <laughs> Program. Yeah, I know. Take it or snatch it. Now start talking. Well, wait a minute. I want all... I told you. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, here. yeah. Now look. Right. I don't have to answer these questions, see? I'm a citizen, see? I'm a taxpayer. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho! Am I ever a taxpayer? <laughs> uh, I work for Woodruff's Department Store, Mr. Andrew J. Woodruff in Glenville, Indiana. I don't believe it, but I'll give you a chance to prove it. There's a telephone. Call long distance and get Woodruff. Okay, I'll get Woodruff. Okay. Here. Operator, will you have long distance get me Mr. Andrew J. Woodruff? Woodruff's Department Store, Glenville. Oh, look, sir, you couldn't possibly have bought that watch in my store. We don't carry this mate. Well, I mean, in your store, the carnation and his lapel sold it to me. Why, he took it right out of his pocket. He had dozens of them there. Jackpot loot. And selling them in my store. Uh, tell me, by any chance was this man long and lean and slightly nuts? Yep, that he was. Reminded me of a fellow who once talked to a rabbit, the six-foot kind. Uh. <laughs> uh, Woodruff speaking. Hello, Mr. Woodruff. Uh. Say, this is Bill Lawrence. Hey, look, Mr. Lawrence, I've kind of mixed up with a little jam here in Chicago. It's a silly thing, but... The police want you to identify me, the lieutenant here. He doesn't believe I work for oh, you. Oh, he doesn't, eh? No. <laughs> he doesn't believe... Uh, uh -huh. Put him on. A.J. Woodruff speaking. Lieutenant, I have no William J. Lawrence in my employ. Well, of course I'm positive. If I were you, I'd throw him in the pokey, tie the key to a jackrabbit's tail, and mail the rabbit to Siberia. <laughs> How'd you get me out of the Husko, Hack? How did, how did you know I was in well, there? Look, for the 50th time, Flick Morgan called me. He called you? Did he mention my ring? For the hundredth time, yes. And I wouldn't worry about it. He's an honest joke. Yeah, well, the people I talked to didn't seem to think so. I, I, I just... I had to say Harry James. Why didn't I say Jackie Robinson or Aunt <laughs> Jemima or somebody? Don't worry. You'll get it straightened out, Bill. 
Harry, you know, I, I've been through a lot the last couple of days. How about stopping someplace for a drink, huh? Just maybe one little one for the road? Hmm? You've already had ten roads. Okay, now stop lecturing me. Hank, did I tell you tonight's my anniversary? Hey, yeah, pal, 40 times. Right, right. That's why you're going home and celebrate with Amy. That's why you bought her the roses you're carrying. But I can't go home. I'm fired. Did I tell you I'd been fired, Hank? Yeah, Woodruff told me and I told you. That is correct. I've been fired. I, I had to answer that telephone. Now, why are these roses shaking their heads at me? Now, they would have answered it, too. Now, nah, easy, pal. Easy, take pal. It easy. Oh, take it easy, pal. Now, look, look, Bill. The thing for you to remember is to be very gay and happy and don't tell Amy a thing. Right. Trust me. Uh, well, we're running low on gas. I guess we ought to stop for some. Well, buy me a glass. I'll drink it. <laughs> That's a pretty good <laughs> oh, one, isn't it? Oh, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Anniversary, mother. Children, go upstairs. Go on upstairs, children. Hi, Tommy. Hi, fellas. What's the matter with you, Dad? Well, he wasn't drinking sarsaparilla. <laughs> go to bed, children. Go on, go on. Mother, apply alcohol to his forehead and rub it in gently, and then take a mustard plaster and place it on his back. Phyllis. Well, if it can cure rheumatism, it sure can cure what ails Dad. <laughs> Amy, these roses are for you. Hi, mother. How about a little celebration, huh? Seems to me you've done your celebrating, overdone it. Well, Mother, it's our anniversary. Say, is that the same fellow playing the piano that was here when I left? The same. What's he trying to do, beat it into a second-hand piano and then get a cut-rate price or something? Hey, Spike Jones! Hey, make with the wash tub, huh? There was a string quartet accompanying him last night. Too bad you missed it. Well, it's too bad we couldn't have him here tonight. Uh, we could have a celebration. Come on, Mother, now let's have a little celebration. Bill, where have you been? Shh, secret. Hank told me not to tell you. Oh, so Hank was in on it. Well, sure. Well, if it hadn't been for Hank, I'd still be in jail. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. You're not going to trick me. No, you're not. Why don't you lie down and rest, Bill? Who, me? No, come on. Let's have a libation, Mother. I don't want anything, Father. You don't want anything, Father? What? Are, are you a toe teetler? <laughs> Please sit down. I think I'd better sit down, yes. Hey. Hey, isn't this my favorite easy chair? Who cut the back legs off it? <laughs> Leslie. It needed to be cut down, so he did it. Well, for what? Am I a midget? <laughs> now, don't get excited. It was completely wrong. It threw the whole room off balance. Threw it off balance, huh? I believe I'm going to throw Leslie off balance. <laughs> Bill, really? What? What did I do? You let him amputate my favorite chair, he changes the living room into a funeral parlor, and besides, you feed him roast glass under duck and poor me. What do I get? A kippered smothered and herring. And you stick up for him. Yes, I stick up for him because you're wrong. You stay out for several nights. Goodness knows where. Come home drunk. Oh, by the way, how is Hilda? Hilda is the best friend a man ever has. <laughs> Good. Because you're going to need a friend. We're through. Hello. Is your father at home? No, ma'am. Your mother? Oh, she is. Hey, is that picture you're carrying for us? Oh, yes. Uh, I don't think we're taking anything more. What is it you wish, Miss Jones? Oh, hello, Mrs. Lawrence. My husband isn't here. May I come in, please? Certainly. Tommy, you may leave. Run along and play. Oh, okay, ma'am. I have the portrait here. Oh, so there is a portrait. Oh, yes. Yes, I hope you will like it. Well, I don't think it matters very much whether I like it or not. Oh, I think when you see it, you change your mind. You will find it does matter. Oh, it's of me. Well, yes. Billy wanted to surprise you. He wanted to give it to you himself. But when I went to the Woodruff store to find him, they told me he does not work there any longer. Uh, yes, that's true. Will Bill be home soon? I wouldn't know. I doubt it. Oh, so it is like that, huh? Yes, I'm afraid it is. 
Well, thank you very much for the portrait. It's really very nice. I'm glad you like it. Now I have to go. My train, she leaves in half an hour, and my taxi is waiting. I'll see you to the door. Goodbye, Miss Jones. And thank you again. Not at all. Oh, Leslie! Uh, Mrs. Lawrence. Yes, Leslie. You'll be very sorry to hear that I'm leaving. For my work, I require an atmosphere of rhythm and harmony. Wait for me, Hilda. I'm going with you. Goodbye, dear Mrs. Lawrence. And you have my deepest sympathy. Mr. Lawrence, I presume? No, I'm his mother-in-law. <laughs> Goodbye. Won't you come in? I'm Mrs. Lawrence. Uh, Pritchett is my name, of the law firm of Hammerhill and Pritchett. I've come to see Mr. Lawrence. He isn't here. Uh, yes, I know. I talked with Hank Summers. Mr. Lawrence is on his way home. May I wait? Of course. Go right in the den. Thank you. Mother, that man's a lawyer. I heard everything he said. Are you and Daddy really going to get Phyllis, it? please. But I want to find out. Phyllis, no questions. Mother. You too, Tommy. Run along, children. Oh, all right, if you don't want to take us into your confidence. Tommy, which one will you choose, Mother or Dad? I'm not going to choose anybody. I'm going to stay right here with all this loot. Hey, what's the matter with everybody? Hello, Amy. Mind if I come in? I packed the wrong stuff in my bag. I didn't... I came to get some of the stuff I need. Go right ahead. Mr. Pritchett, the lawyer, is waiting in the den. Oh, all right, Amy. Mr. Lawrence? Yeah, yeah, well, whatever my wife told you is true. I'm not going to contest anything. Oh, please, Mr. Lawrence. All right, all right, now just say what you've got to say and get it over with. Uh, don't expect me to be calm about Mr. it. Mr. Lawrence, I don't know what domestic difficulties you're having, nor can I be of any assistance to you. I'm here solely on behalf of my client, Mr. Franklin Laswell Morgan. Mr. who? Franklin Laswell Morgan. Flick. Flick Morgan? What's that cheap crook done with my diamond ring? Unfortunately, he lost it. But you're going to be paid for your ring in cash. Here. I'm sorry to interrupt. You're not. Our business is done. But I think you'd better take a look at your husband. He appears to be in a state of shock. Good day. Hey, Amy. Amy, look at this. $5,000. Where did you get it? I, uh, Flick Morgan, a Chicago racketeer. Oh, what for? I don't know. I think I kept the code. The code? Yeah, uh, honey, do you realize what this means? We can use this to take care of the taxes. This will get us back on our feet again. We're out of the woods, honey. Wonderful. And all the time I thought Mr. Pritchett was your lawyer. Oh, you thought he was my lawyer? I thought he was your... Oh, darling, I, I love you. I couldn't live without you, Bill. <laughs> Am I interrupting something? Well, what do you want, Woodruff? Oh, I, uh, I want to talk to you. Well, Bill. I don't want to talk to you. Oh, now, 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 look, Bill... What I told the police was just a joke. Oh, it's just a joke, huh? Uh, That's your idea of a joke. Well, this is mine, right square on the button. <laughs> oh, dear. I'd better get the smelling salts. I'll get it. The phone, Bill, the phone. Up on those stairs. All right. Hello? Hello, hello, Bill. This is Hank. Look, Bill, I want to give you a tip. You can hold Woodruff up for a raise. He's on his way over to your place. Yeah, you got the job, vice president. Fred lasted one day. Mr. Woodruff? Mr. Woodruff! Be careful, the phone books! <laughs> Smelling salts. Amy? Amy? Bill, how'd you make out? Pack the trunks. We've got three weeks' vacation. No. How on earth did you manage it? I just put my foot down. I said, AJ, I've got to have two weeks' vacation. Or what? Or. I never got that far. He said, Bill... He calls me Bill now. Oh. He said, Bill, take three. Say... Amy, don't you think maybe we ought to tell that piano player to go home? I've tried for days. I don't know how to tell him in Italian. He doesn't speak English. Hey, Axel Stordahl. 
<laughs> Why don't you get lost? No stick English. You know, beat it and I'll give you the piano. Oh, thanks, bud. Why didn't you say that a week ago? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, now we can fly to New York. No, no, no. We better go to the country. But New York. I'll get it. Hello? Mr. William Lawrence? Yeah, this is William Lawrence. This is the federal broadcasting system. Will you be home tonight between 9 and 10 o'clock? Hey, Amy, it's another jackpot. Don't answer. Don't talk. Do anything but don't answer. Hello? Federal broadcasting? Yes. Willie doesn't live here anymore. (laughs) Come on, darling. We're going on our vacation. We're going to the country where there's no telephone, no radio, no modern conveniences, except a few of the old-fashioned ones. And I'm an old-fashioned girl. I always do what my husband says. So, we're flying to New York. Our thanks to you, Miss Truman and Mr. Stewart. Our stars will return in just a moment. Next week, the Screen Director's Playhouse presents its radio adaptation of the 20th Century Fox production of The Captain from Castile. And our stars will be Douglas Fairbanks and Paula Morgan and our guest director, Henry King. And now, here again are tonight's stars, Miss Margaret Truman and James Stewart. in the motion picture jackpot and are familiar with all its creators. How about telling us something about its director, Walter Lang? Oh, that would be a great pleasure, Margaret. One of the happiest experiences of my career was working with Walter Lang. And as a matter of fact, I guess everyone else who worked on the picture had the same happy time. We really hit the jackpot when we drew him as our director. Walter is a combination of warmth and understanding and has an extraordinary sense of humor. Ladies and gentlemen, a very great director, Mr. Walter Lang. Thank you, Margaret and Jimmy. Personally, I've gotten a great thrill out of listening to both of your performances. And I'll wager there are a great many more people who feel just the same way. On behalf of the Screen Director's Playhouse, I'd like to extend an invitation to both of you to come back anytime. We hope real soon. Thanks again, and good night. Good night, Waller. Good night, everyone. Jackpot was presented through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, makers of the Daryl F. Zanuck Technicolor production on the Riviera, starring Danny Kaye and Gene Tierney. Margaret Truman will next be heard on The Big Show on NBC, Sunday, May 6th. Jimmy Stewart will soon be seen in the Cecil B. DeMille Technicolor production for Paramount Studios, the greatest show on earth. Included in tonight's cast were Don Bender, Ann Diamond, Jeffrey Silver, Eddie Marr, Jerry Hausner, Bill Boucher, Jim Backus, Betty Lou Gerson, Sidney Miller, Ed Max, and Stan Waxman. Jackpot was adapted for radio by Jack Rubin from the screenplay written by Phoebe and Henry Efron on an original story by John McNulty. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley and directed by Bill Karn. Portions of tonight's program were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen next week when Screen Director's Playhouse presents The Captain from Castile, starring Douglas Fairbanks and Paula Morgan, with Screen Director Henry King. (laughs) 
Listen again next week to Screen Directors Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's All-Star Festival of Comedy, Music, Mystery, and Drama. Listen tomorrow evening to the one and only Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night feature of the All-Star Festival. Tomorrow night, enjoy William Bendix in The Life of Riley on NBC.